Thank you, everyone. Thank you for taking the time uh, to be here. Um, my name is Raghavan, and the title of this uh, talk is going to be Translation Augmented Generation. The gist of this talk is going to be that large language models are very much English-centric. Uh, is there a stopgap solution, putting my hacker mindset or engineer mindset, that we can come up with while LLM spread outside of the Anglosphere? That's the gist of this talk. So, and then I came up with this phrase, retrieval augmented generation is fancy, so I wanted to come up with something that sounds very similar to retrieval augmented generation, so I came up with the phrase translation augmented generation. More of a marketing ploy, but uh, it still uh, is true to the substance. Cool, a quick introduction about me. Uh, I am uh, a senior engineering manager at uh, LinkedIn. I work at Search AI. So if you have used LinkedIn search to search for someone or uh, search for a job or post con con uh, or company, uh, I have written code uh, that powers it. And right now I lead the team um, that powers it. So if you have any um, concerns, questions about it, feel free to ping me. I'm happy to answer. Uh, I am also outside of my day job. I'm also a volunteer for Janae Commons. Um, there are a lot of folks from Janae Commons. Thank you, folks. Uh, especially the application source team. Uh, and uh, apart from Janae Commons, I am also uh, a contributor to UNITU. Uh, UNITU is this uh, UN's uh, disaster management uh, group uh, that looks at uh, earthquakes, uh, uh, volcanoes, et cetera. They, they, I don't work on that, but I help them develop uh, search engines uh, so that they can uh, uh, process their data better. Uh, cool. And uh, apart from that, I am also uh, a hackathon participant in LabLab.ai. Uh, one of the reasons for me to do this is there is actually a selfish reason. It's the selfish reason is the field of AI is moving fast. Uh, you want to be part of a community uh, to learn uh, something new and also like keep yourself uh, updated with what's happening uh, with the latest and greatest. I can give two concrete examples uh, in the interest of time. One is. I did not really even know about speculative decoding uh, unless I heard about this in one of these uh, uh, communities. And then, I, and then that phrase led me to do my own research, and I try, try to implement it. Uh, I, I was not successful, but I, I know it. I, I, there is a difference between knowing something versus just knowing the name of something. I know something more than just the name of that speculative decoding. So. I would highly recommend, or like, I would, uh, if you're interested, feel please join Genea Commons, and I am also part of the application source stream, which requires more uh, representation. Cool. Uh, the agenda for today's talk is uh, reach of the LLMs. Uh, LLMs, uh, what is the uh, reach in terms of geographical uh, um, reach of various LLMs? Race of prompt engineering. Specifically, we see English-focused prompt engineering. And uh, I want to show some cherry-pick examples of responsible, because I'm not blaming that LLMs are completely bad when it comes to non-English, but I want to show that response quality for uh, prompts in low-resource languages are poor, especially when it's text-to-text -text models or diffusion models. And I want to uh, get to the reasons uh, why, it's bad, why the quality is poor and the challenges behind that. And finally, some solutions uh, related to that. Cool. Uh, this is a screenshot. Everyone always starts with GPT. I wanted to be different, so I started with Claude. <laughs> so uh, Claude, you see that of the top five uh, countries where Claude gets most of your traffic, uh, two are from Anglosphere, US, UK. India, you can also consider the lingua franca is uh, like there are 18 official languages, but the, the most frequently used language in the internet is still English. Similarly, and this is from uh, similar web. Then if you go to chat.openai.com, which is chat GPT, again, uh, the first and fifth are definitely Anglosphere. India is also like the common uh, language that's used on the internet is English. Then Mistral, finally now you see France on the map. Uh, but then again, you see uh, US and Canada in the top five. And it has some Asian presence. Uh, probably because I believe it comes with Apache 2.0 license. <laughs> That's my guess. Uh, and then Falcon, you see you see UAE there. Uh, and apart from UAE, you see uh, two Ang English-speaking countries, United States and U UK. The point that I'm trying to uh, say is that LLMs are still English-centric, which is which 
I mean, it makes sense. The, the breakthrough started here, so that's why. Uh, and uh, uh, LNs are English centric. It's slowly starting to spread, but not at uh, a pace that we would like to. Now, if you notice in these four slides, I said closed source LLMs in the first two slides, and then I said Mistral and uh, Falcon. I did not use the word open source. I'm giving a quick plug uh, to the work that, we, that uh, my colleagues at um, Gen AI Commons did, is the definition of open source is really, what is it truly an open source model is still up for debate. And the group at Gen AI Commons has come up with model openness framework. Uh, Matt is here, if you're interested, please uh, just Google for model openness framework Gen AI Commons, or just Google for model openness framework, you will get the paper. And uh, please go through it and give your comments. Now, back to the talk. So LLMs are pretty much English-centric, and this has result, and uh, this has actually given to a new class of engineers called prompt engineers. Uh, there are so many different types of prompting techniques you might be aware of, which is chain of thought prompting, which is nothing but uh, prompt is now a detailed step-by-step -step pseudocode of what you want to do. And then there is contrastive chain of thought prompting, which is in addition to uh, telling the LLM what to do, you also tell what not to do, what is invalid reasoning. And then there is this take a deep breath, which is nothing but just the phrase, take a deep breath. If you add that phrase according to DeepMind, uh, it improves the mathematical uh, reasoning or math like the performance of LLMs in mathematical problems improves. And then there is emotional prompting. I have personally used this where I tell LLMs, say, my life depends on your answer <laughs> or my job, my boss would fire me if you don't give me a good answer. Uh, again, uh, LLM has given rise to this new field called prompt engineering. And how, how many of you have tried uh, any non-English prompts in this group? That's great. So you would be able to resonate uh, with the examples that I'm going to show. I started with this English prompt of uh, write three paragraphs, four lines each, about proton, electron, and neutron in that order. And uh, let's be objective. I am not going to comment on the quality. I'm just going to say three paragraphs, four lines, proton, electron, and neutron. It does a good job. You can see that small yellow markings there. My command F highlight is only yellow. So you see three paragraphs and then four uh, dots, four, four sentence completion, uh, uh, four sentences each. And then the first paragraph is about proton. The select, uh, second paragraph is about electron. And then the third paragraph is about neutron. I am a native Tamil speaker, uh, which is uh, a language spoken in southern India, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, and uh, I'm missing one more country, Sri Lanka. Uh, so when I tried the same thing in Tamil, all I got is three bullet points. <laughs> uh, and uh, you can copy paste this. You can. You, you, and I took this from Google Translate. I did not type this in from Tamil, but I took, took the previous sentence, could put it in Google Translate, and then I got this. Uh, so three bullet points instead of three paragraphs. I'm not even going to into quality, but like, there's nothing for me to evaluate here in, in terms of quality. Then uh, I moved west to African uh, languages. In the interest of time, I'm going to show only one example here. I, I picked a language that's spoken in at least more than one country. I picked Somalian, which is spoken in uh, Ethiopia and Somalia. And then I used Google Translate to translate, uh, write a story about someone helping you in four paragraphs. Uh, I did not want to get into quality. I just wanted to be like, is it able to objectively follow that instruction of four paragraphs? I put that in Somalia. <laughs> I got response in English. Uh, and then it's definitely not four paragraphs. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Uh, the word four, the, the number four is there in the uh, prompt too. So uh, if it's English, it's able to follow. If it's not in English, uh, you, you will run into these examples. I'm not saying it's always bad. If you're like GPT-4 is good. GPT-4 is, is able to follow instructions for most of the times, but one, I'm, I'm able to pick up these examples once in a while, and it's not foolproof. Like English is far, far better compared to other languages. And then the same is for uh, uh, several other South Asian languages. I am not a native speaker of any of these languages, so I don't want to comment on the quality. But objectively, three paragraph, four lines about solar system. It got three paragraphs right in Telugu, but it's not four, four sorry, in Bengali, but it's not four lines each. And it got only two paragraphs in Telugu. It's not three paragraphs instead of uh, um, three paragraphs on four lines. So objectively, I'm able to say the, the instruction following capability of text-to-text -text LLMs 
in non-English languages has a huge room to improve. Now, uh, how about uh, text-to-image stable diffusion style models? It's, the problem is actually much bigger there. You can actually use clipdrop.co stable diffusion turbo to uh, test for yourself right now. Where uh, I went to east, uh, for the east, I took, uh, um, uh, I use, again, I used Google Translate to take a deer walking on dirt road, and then I translated it to Mandarin. If there are Mandarin speakers, please correct me if uh, this is wrong. Uh, I can go to another prompt and still show that it uh, doesn't work. On the left, you see English. It feels like a deer that's walking on a dirt road, for sure. On Mandarin, uh, I don't think it's deer in the first place. I can, I can, I can make the, I can come to terms with the, that it's a dirt road, but it's definitely, I can convince myself that it's a dirt road because there are so many people, and as a result, the road is dirty. But it's definitely not what I wanted. Or in, assuming putting myself in the shoes of a Mandarin speaker who used that prompt, they would, they did not, uh, uh, they they would not be happy with this response. So, so, what are the reasons for it? I, I, I did get a peek into that slide, but I want to, you know, to be more lively, I want to get some reasons. Why do you think this is the case? Yeah, more or less, it's a train data disparity. Uh, this I copy pasted from Wikipedia. The common crawl data set uh, that is used by GPT series models is 46% English and uh, 6% German, Russian, Japanese, French, Spanish, and Chinese. So 6 times 6, 36. Uh, 46 plus 36 is uh, 82. 82% 82 these languages. So that is an, that, that's a major disparity. Second thing is uh, these languages have complex morphology. Uh, it's, and uh, there are some tokenizer challenges uh, because of the morphology associated with these languages. Now, uh, credit to uh, uh, an open source researcher. Uh, in open source model, in open source specifically Llama 2, this is even uh, this disparity is even bigger. So, it, according to this particular image, I think I, uh, I was able to verify this uh, that 89.7% is English, and uh, other and unknown is 8.4, probably code, which is and code is mostly in English again. Uh, which means 98, 99% English, 1% uh, they gave their representation to other languages. Now, I said uh, this training disparity is the biggest reason, uh, but how does this translate? Like, if uh, what is the what is it causing? Is because of this training disparity, there's a uh, there's a token challenge that is. Uh, tokenizers are uh, tokenizers are not well represented. It's the same. It's the same thing. Sky is blue in three different languages. One is English, and then the Tamil version of it, which is Vanam Nilamanade, and then the Hindi is. I am not a native speaker of Hindi, so, uh, but I do understand Hindi. Asman Nila hai, which mean, if you look at these three uh, examples, uh, GPT required just five tokens. T H E space SKY, space IS, space BLUE, and then the dot. Uh, if you look at Tamil, there are so many unknown characters, most of them Unicode. And then uh, what it was actually able to identify is uh, the dot at the end, and then two characters in between. Um, and then Hindi is better, uh, not 20, like Tamil is worse, 25 tokens, but in Hindi it was able to at least uh, identify two characters, to, uh, like a token that has two characters and it's 16, uh, 16 tokens compared to 25 tokens, but it's still poor compared to English. So this is what is the problem. Like we, it's, uh, we say training disparity, how the training disparity translates into a challenge is technically this is the problem. It's all about tokens, tokens, tokens. So what are some solutions? Training from scratch? is a solution, but I don't have the money. <laughs> uh, even if there is money, even let's say I was able to get a sponsor to give me a couple of million dollars, do we have sufficient training data beyond Wikipedia? It's a low resource language for a reason. Uh, and uh, even if there is uh, training data, do we have a standardized uh, 
uh, peer reviewed evaluation set like we have for English. These two are major challenges. So I just don't want to say the stranger disparity, uh, like it's sorry, I just want to say it's a matter of cost. It's actually a matter of lack of high quality training data and evaluation data. And then uh, fine tuning is an option. I tried that. Uh, there are lots of people who are trying to do fine tuning. Uh, there's a Persian Lama, there's a Tamil Lama, there's a Mistral Tamil, there's a Can Lama. There's blah language followed by Lama or Mistral then fill in your favorite language. There are so many efforts, and it, basically these efforts have three things in common, which is uh, token expansion, because they all know that it's, it comes from the lack of tokens, and then continual pre-training on that uh, domain-specific data, and then you do instruction fine-tuning through LoRa at the end. So this is a good uh, middle ground, but uh, lesser cost compared to mm, training from scratch. But um, end of the day, uh, I try to see if there is even a cheaper solution that I can get away with? Can we just build a translation layer before and after? So I built an application where I use, built a sim simple translation layer that takes the English prompt, sorry, non-English prompt to English prompt, feed it to your LLM of choice, and then do reverse translation. You get your response in your target language. Does, does that work? Uh, so I tested this on Arabic. Uh, so this is, this is actually a hack that I submitted for Lab Lab Day Hackathon. That's why you see these screenshots. Uh, where uh, I'm not a native speaker of Arabic, but uh, the prompt is uh, from Google Translate. I need to write a report about solar system. What are the different planets? What are some previous planets? Uh, again, I try to give these numbers to be, to, so that I can evaluate objectively five paragraphs, each paragraph containing four lines. If I put it, if I just give that prompt as is, all I got was one, two, three, six lines. While in the next, I can clearly see because it's an English prompt that was later translated, I was able to see, was able to give five paragraphs. And an interesting thing that I noticed is uh, because these tokens are, because lesser tokens, as I said, uh, it's lesser tokens in English versus more tokens in uh, other languages, the inference time, the response time from GPT uh, 3.5 is also lesser, like 21 seconds for uh, uh, the Arabic prompt asses, while the translated prompt just took 13 seconds. And uh, in Tamil, if I remember right, it's 15 versus 51 seconds for the Tamil prompt and then 11 seconds for the English prompt. So uh, yeah, S same goes for, uh, I tried in Urdu. I'm not a native speaker of Urdu, but uh, again, objectively the same five paragraphs, four lines each, I was able to verify. Uh, and this also, uh, 33 seconds without that translation layer, uh, 15 seconds with translation, because these tokens are there in the large language model. The tokens make a big difference. Great, so prompt translation helps. When will it not work? Any guess? Yes. Yes, so, uh, cultural nuances are last. Your prompt or the task that you are trying to accomplish has to be language agnostic or uh, culture agnostic. Um, it cannot be, uh, like I cannot ask something that is very, very specific to Arabic or very, very specific to Tamil or very, very specific to some of the African language and do expect that translation layer will take care of it. Uh, and then, Again, your performance depends on quality of the translation layer. If your translator, the model that the in-house, mo the model that you used for translation is poor, then things are lost in translation. And cultural nuances are lost. Because cultural nuances are lost, it is not a good solution for stable diffusion, uh, like HDXL style models. So uh, again, I tried this prompt. You can try this in clip drop right now. The girl is playing with a dog. That's, that's the input prompt. And uh, stable diffusion generated this image for me. Let's assume that if I had just tried a translation as a solution, someone from Africa or someone from East Asia or someone from South Asia using their prompt in their language where the underlying meaning is they want to draw the picture of a girl playing with a dog, I don't think they were looking for this image. So translation will not help there. So I tried this in, <laughs> this in Hindi. Uh, I don't see a girl, I don't see a dog. Uh, and then, yeah, and then I tried this in Greek. 
Uh, I don't see a, there might be a girl somewhere in that, but I don't see a dog, definitely. And then this is in Arabic. Uh, and then uh, this is in Tamil. Uh, there are, there's definitely not a young girl here. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but there is, the, the engineer in me feels that there is a solution here. Uh, so this is English for the, so uh, for the for the so the thing is that I was trying stable diffusion I was trying to do prompt engineering with stable diffusion I tried the prompt girl is playing with a dog in English and I tried the same in other languages this is my original intention is to draw the picture of girl uh, is playing with a dog in English it got right but again the face is doesn't feel good but still okay I can live with this and then when I tried in Hindi uh, Greek Arabic and then uh, Tamil, it did not work. But the engineer in me felt that, can I do this prompt engineering hack and get, get away with it without having to train a stable diffusion model for my language or without doing fine tuning? So that is an upside to it. The upside is, it got the meaning right in English, but it got the cultural nuances right in other language, although it totally lost the meaning. So, so what I try to do is, can I just, write this intermediate layer that does translation and concatenate these two prompts. <laughs> so uh, I, what I did is, uh, I, I tried a whole bunch of things for different languages, starting from simple concatenation to uh, letting LLM take the input prompt and then the translated prompt and then come up with a new prompt. So, uh, so I take the input prompt, get the English prompt, and then I also let LLM in one technique, I tried simple concatenation. In another technique, I wanted LLM to come up with a prompt using these two. And then that is the input prompt that goes to uh, stable diffusion turbo. And uh, that <laughs> Hindi plus English, this is right. And the thing that I really like about that is uh, this is how uh, homes look like in Hindi speaking regions. <laughs> Uh, so it was able to get the cultural nuance right from that Hindi characters and the meaning of what the user actually was looking for from the English characters. Uh, and then the same thing in uh, when I did English plus Tamil and then English plus Arabic, I cannot speak for, but I feel like the buildings resemble Arabic architecture, but I cannot speak for it. But at least there is definitely a girl and there is definitely a dog. And then uh, for Tamil, I can, although the face doesn't look, uh, did not come out very well, I can, I feel like it represents the, the as a Tamil speaking person, I can, I definitely feel like uh, the stable diffusion got what I wanted to actually draw. And then I actually, yeah, this is the example that I want to notice. Because Arabic is from left to right, uh, I had to come up with uh, techniques like, this is the Arabic, phrase, this is the corresponding English phrase, can you draw a picture? So the intermediate layer has to do these things uh, in addition to just con instead of simple concatenation. So simple concatenation works for left to right languages, um, but then you, um, having an another LLM take these two inputs and then coming up, coming up with a better prompt is, uh, it was actually more useful from, from the application standpoint, the quality standpoint. Um, so, oh sorry. So the so the uh, thank you, that that brings me to the end of uh, the talk. The point that I'm trying to put forward is uh, there is this word called jugad, uh, which you can search uh, on the internet. To uh, it's it's an it's a phrase popular in India. You can make do with what you have, with all the resource constraints, with all the um, challenges. If you put in enough effort you will come up with something very simple that actually solves your 80% of problem, the Pareto principle, uh, the very small uh, um, solution that, very simple hack that might solve 80% of your problems. And uh, this is an example where, uh, where I felt that just doing this hack without having to, because when I tried to fine tune a model, suddenly I saw the, uh, my credit card, uh, like, went like $2,000 or so over a period of 30, 40 days. And then uh, I just disabled that account. And then I tried to solve this problem with uh, whatever hacks that putting my engineering hack had looked at the internet, what others are doing. And then why not translate, 
translation works in some cases, but did not work in stable diffusion. So it is possible to come up with a solution. It may not be the perfect solution, but it is a solution that you can come up with your problems uh, with, the con with the constraint resource, even if there are, uh, even if you have limited resources. Cool, that's all. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ping me on LinkedIn. I am always active on LinkedIn, and uh, I am happy to answer. <laughs> yes. <laughs>
uh, let's see. Let me just remove some of this. Okay, come on. Yeah, I, see, you see, it's ignoring that. It's becoming more and more not Arabic and English centric. Yeah, th yeah. I, I I can point to my GitHub repository, Google TransGPT. Uh, it's in the lab lab. Uh, I, I I'll add it to the presentation. Uh, but yes. So if you add that additional context, I did not want to develop that prompt. I let an LLM generate that prompt. You, your, your solution works. Yeah. Um, let's see, uh, more generic Arabic text, uh, generic, Ara this is Arabic, and then, see, it's, it's not like this, right? See, the, the, in, the to in the token vocabulary of uh, stable diffusion, there are Ar Arabic words. There are Tamil words, there are Hindi words, just that the representation is small. So I do expect words like dog to exist in that token. So, uh, so in, that, in that vocabulary. Uh, so pasting some generic thing will not probably help. It's probably, it's not, it's not able to uh, infer the meaning, but uh, um, but it, it's, it's getting the cultural nuances from the, the way stable diffusion is trained, they probably used pictures from that Arabic setting and then came up with this caption and then added noises to train the diffusion model. So I do believe that the, you have to still paste the prompt access. You cannot go with some garbage, or like a generic uh, non-English text there and then rely on the English text to give the meaning. Uh, it does play some role. Again, this is hunch, I don't have data to prove it. Um, it, I, I believe it plays some role. Uh, it does not always help. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Yeah, the main challenge with this is that there is no clear standardized data set for me to say that this solution works by this X percent objectively. So you have to take my word anecdotally. Uh, because of presence of uh, English words, it doesn't really. Uh, exception is GPT-4. GPT-4 is one trillion parameter mixture of experts model. It's able to do some amazing things, but uh, not open source, openly, I shouldn't say open source models. Uh, partial open source models <laughs> or class three open source models that where uh, some of it is open. Uh, um, has this problem. It does not always work, is the answer. Any other questions? Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you.